Now as to shaping the aerofoil, there's your profile, imagine this side on, okay, so that's your leading edge there, trailing edge down there. Convention is that you take about a 45 degree angle on your on the top there and a little bit below the absolute center and then you round that off to so it's not sort of fighting the wind so much and then you take about a 15 degree angle from just behind the middle of the the edge and you bring it back doesn't go to a, a very sharp edge because uh, we don't want to do the old Mad Max thing when we're uh, when we're catching it. Even though you that that's the side that's hitting your hand. All right, it can do all kinds of things after it impacts. So you have about a 15 degree gradient there, but of course it's a curve. It's not flat. And I use my laminations of my timber. And if you're using aircraft grade ply, you've got around roughly 10 of those lines to see how that curve is progressing all right if it starts off at a slight curve at the top you can see the gaps in the laminations when you're looking at it from above right you'll see them getting closer and closer and closer closer together as you as you get down towards the steeper part of the curve Okay, so that is effectively an aircraft wing, isn't it? But like I said, it's not a fan. You know, there's more going on than that. Um, now, the, on the only other thing that you can actually change is, uh, besides, you know, how you, t you take your, your edge, your leading edge is actually quite important because the air that flows over there is determined by where that center point is. So how much air flow you're actually splitting going over there changes how much lift you're going to give it, but also undercutting. So if I take off a slight bit of undercut, and I like to do my undercuts very gradually, and only slight, and only at the end of the design process. Okay, if at all. Some designs don't need an undercut. Um, and, and basically, what that's doing is, in, if you talk about this as a, your cord or your, 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 you know, your shape of your, we call it the uh, cro cross section of your aerofoil and, and this cord, there's your center line, your, that, that gives you your angle of incidence. The angle of incidence is basically the angle at which your wing is relative to the to the uh, to the wind, okay, or to the air, the airflow, I should say. So by undercutting that airflow, I'm, I'm effectively just slightly changing, if you like, that angle of incidence. So I'm on drawing's a bit wobbly, but I'm changing my angle of incidence so like a, a paper jet. When you make a paper jet and you throw it, you angle the piece of paper because it's not an aerofoil shape, it's, it's not, it doesn't, it doesn't separate the air. All, all that's actually happening is the flat bit of edge of paper is going through the air and if it's angled up, it's actually going to push it up more or if it's angled down, it's going to produce downdraft. Very much, very much like uh, ailerons or flight surfaces on on aircraft work. Okay, by pushing up, pushing air up, and then pushing it down. Same sort of thing, but it's a little bit more subtle on a boomerang when you do it on the uh, leading edge. But that's the last thing you think about. First thing you th you, you do is when you've got your profile worked out, you've got your center of uh, rotation worked out, you 
make your um, prototype to how you want it to be. Then you throw it around for a while in various different winds and you see what happens to the boomerang. I, what I do is I, I have a standard throw, I have about a 15 degree layover angle, um, about a you know, 20 degree uh, elevation relative to the, uh, the horizon, um, 45 degrees onto the oncoming wind. I know to see where my boomerang goes, where it ends up, how it lands. If it does a, does a figure eight, um, then you know, I've, I've got too much lift or the profile shape of my dingle arm isn't what I want it to be. Uh, if it hooks around and lands in front of me, I've, I've probably got given it too much, um, too much uh, angle of incident, uh, too much undercut, um, and and so on. Uh, if it rises up in the air, I've I've probably taken off too much, um, too much uh, off the top. If I get too much lift, I've probably cut that down too far. Okay, so on my next blank, I don't, I don't uh, take so much off the uh, off the uh, trailing edge, so so I don't give it such a shape that'll produce so much lift, and see what that does. And what I generally do is I. I well, I go out there with a pencil because uh, with, with a number of boomerangs that I've made to various different degrees of um, of shaping um, and I would write on there this, this particular boomerang because it has um, uh, too much cutaway, too much lift. So I write too much lift, less um, less angle on the lift arm, or uh, alternatively, if it hooks around too much in a circle, okay, um, maybe less undercut on the um, on the uh, dingle arm, for example. So there's various ways and means you can establish how to get your boomerang to fly the way you want it to fly. Okay, so that's basically it. You've got the profile, you've got to work out your centre of gravity, you've got to work out how it flies, you've got to understand what shaping does to the boomerang. Um, and further down the track, once you've got your basic model worked out, you can work on different ways of tuning your boomerang in flight. So if you're in a heavier than normal wind, you might want to work out ways of attaching more weight to it. All right, people quite often tape on coins or, or lead weights, or they, they drill into them and you know sink lead into them. Um, if you want to give it more wind resistance, you just whack a rubber band around it. So you always have a few rubber bands in your bag um, to to slow the boomerang down through the air because it's just been too efficient in aerofoil uh, for what, for the wind that you're trying to to work with. Okay. So good luck. Um, if you've got any questions, uh, put them on this uh, video and uh, I'll, I may do a video response to them. Cheers. Throw some boomerangs.